Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Hope you guys are all having a wonderful time. Today I wanted to go ahead and introduce you guys to my Righteous Fire Chieftain 3.24 or Necropolis League. Now, the purpose of this video is to pretty much just get you guys jump started so you can jump right on into the RF Chieftain. I'll try to be as fast as I can with some of this stuff, but there's a lot of things to do, so let's jump right on into it. If you've never used my website before, I try to make this as beginner friendly as possible, but more so just as clean as possible. If you are brand new and or want to get started right away, I have an Act 1 through Act 10 Chieftain walkthrough, so you can actually start playing right now with a video I recorded. It goes through the entire campaign for you. Go check it out. Furthermore, let's go ahead and talk about some pros and cons. So on my website here, you're going to go ahead and go to the RF FAQ. Also, if you want to just snag the POB and just leave right now, that's fine as well. Go ahead and just copy it from right here and go ahead and import it. So from here, we're going to hit up the RF FAQ. We're going to go ahead and take a look at some pros and cons. So if I go ahead and type in chief here, what is better, Juggernaut, Inquisitor or Chieftain? For the purpose of this, we're going to focus more on Chieftain. So Chieftain's got a little bit of a slow act one. Just like, you know, Juggernaut, because we're both Marauders. Uh, I like to Mule and get Caster Gems. So this is basically leveling another character. It's only a few minutes long. It doesn't take that, that long at all. You can go check out the campaign video if you want to see how it's done. Um, you get don't get a ton of regeneration from your Ascendancy, like Juggernaut and Inquisitor. However, you do have a much easier time gearing because your Fire Res splashes to your Cold and Lightning, so you only stack Fire Res. It's by far got the best mapping experience with built-in explodes, which we'll jump into in a minute. It's the worst for bossing on a budget because you have to stand still for most of your damage. This sounds pretty bad. It's not that bad for mapping. It can be more of a pain in the ass for bossing. This is not nearly as bad when you're able to just face tank though. It has the best experience dealing with map mods because of Ramako's sunlight. This literally eliminates mods such as Monsters gain bonus elemental res, monsters are fire and ignite resistant, monsters are possessed and have bonus elemental res, monsters gain endurance charges, you get the point. Anything that has to do with elemental res, Chieftain does not care. This is a double-edged sword though, because this means when you're doing bossing encounters, you cannot minus their res past minus 20. So to go ahead and jump into that, which we'll explain in just a minute, first we're going to look at defensive layers, and then we're going to go ahead and look at the POB real fast. Here are some of the things you can expect on your Righteous Fire Chieftain on minimal gearing, maybe like, yeah, I'd say minimal gearing. 1.5k life regen, 5k plus life, literally immortal against physical damage when you have your physical conversion set up. You won't be immortal right away. This one is more of a later thing, but you'll be very resistant against it. Very strong against physical damage over time due to Cloak of Flame. This means bleeds are literally irrelevant. Uh, 90 max all res. This is very cheap to set up. Freeze immune, ignite immune, shock resistant, defiance of destiny. This is an end game chase item, will probably be very expensive, but this makes your character immortal while mapping. Not needed for any of this content though. And a bit of reduced crit damage taken. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Before we close out of it though, go back to the homepage, make sure you snag your Righteous Fire Chieftain build. And if you're curious on a loot filter for this, you can also go ahead and click here for the loot filter. Last thing, and then I'll close out of the website. If you're more of a written person, you want to read that information, I'll have a written version of the Chieftain done probably in the next couple of days. You can find that on POE Vault. So right now I have the Juggernaut and the Inquisitor version. There'll be Chieftain as well. All right, let's go ahead and close out of that and snag or take a look at the POB. So one of the nice things about Chieftain and also how the POB is set up, if you start at the beginning here and look at 1 to 20, take the items, go to 1 to 20, look at the skills 1 to 20, this is going to go ahead and explain everywhere you need to go at X point in time. Furthermore, when you look at the skills, if you go ahead and pay attention here, you'll actually see there's a lot of extra text here. This is telling you what gems you need to pick up when you make your mule. This is helping you put in a regex at the beginning of the game to highlight some intelligence gear and boots with movement speed. Over here, we've got your primary links you want to use. For people who don't like rolling magma, there is a setup for your Holy Flame Totem instead. It's got your auras, your mobility, and then a lot of people always ask what should you level and what doesn't need to be leveled. This kind of explains this. This clarity is shown as you go through the other stages of the build. Uh, it's got all detail for you. Now, going on and checking the Chieftain Ascendancy, because this is the main appeal of what people want, I want to go ahead and explain some stuff. So let me just take the build dropped out and go to 80 to 93. Uh, we'll put this one from 61 to 93. And then here we'll just go 81 to 93. 
you'll notice I have 215 fire resistance. If I take off this node, Sallow Cleansing Water, take a look at what happens to our resistances. This one node by itself carries your entire resistance. This is not just quality of life, this also uh, basically allows more gear to have uh, more aggressive suffixes. An example is most accessories, your jewelry, like your rings, a lot of people like life tri -res. This gives Chieftain the opportunity to get damage over time multiplier there, fire damage, dexterity, a lot of really good things, frenzy charges. One of the other nice ones is if you look at my maximum fire res at 90%, Balaco's Storm Embrace allows you to splash your max fire res to all of your other resistances. This makes it very easy, even in an SSF environment, to achieve 90 max res. Ramako Sunlight is the one I was talking about with you have to be stationary to get your damage. It's really not as bad as it seems. When you are shield charging through maps, at the end of your shield charge, you are going to be considered stationary for maybe like 0.2 of a second, depending on how fast you move. Oftentimes, this is enough time to trigger uh, an explosion, which leads us to Hinakora to start your map chaining. So let's go ahead and get started. So over here, I've got the Righteous Fire YouTube Chieftain run. This is actually the character from the campaign run. So we're going to go ahead and jump into some maps. Now gets us to the nice part of Righteous Fire. Also, we got three skill points. What do I do with these? Uh, we won't do anything with them. All right, we got a flooded mine map. All right, sure. You can steal my charges. Why not? <clears throat> Have you ever wanted to just shield charge through hordes of monsters and watch them burn behind you? Do you want to just light the world on fire? Well, have no fear. RF Chieftain is here. Simply shield charge and turn on your righteous fire and watch all of the monsters melt. That's pretty much the appeal of playing this character. Now, this character is really weak. I don't even have faster attacks yet on my shield charge. This is because we quite literally came off of the campaign with very minimal gear. Uh, actually, why do I not have faster attacks? So that's a, you know what that's supposed to be? There's momentum. That's good enough. You can see here that there are a lot of explodes proccing. The explode proc is just that little 5% node, and that 5% node only gets stronger and stronger as you go through the your map tier and just add more and more monsters. Also notice my life regen is like not very good right now. This is because I have no uniques equipped. Um, there are some cheap uniques you can get uh, to jumpstart the build, such as Rise of the Phoenix, Immortal Flash, Kikizuru. These are all fantastic options to assist your build. They're also all very cheap. Let's go ahead and zoom over to the map boss. I think it's over here. Sometimes the map boss will occasionally get one shot. So here is actually the map boss right here. Sometimes you get lucky and you get an explode. Actually, I don't think the explode got to hit him, but sometimes the explode hits him and will literally one-shot map bosses. So this is your starting character, what your initial maps are going to look like. Let's go ahead and jump a little bit further. So over here, I'm going to go ahead and jump into this character. Now, this character just finished a Eater and Exarch run. Oops. I was really lazy in this run. I'd probably say my Exarch Eater runs are closer to like 12 hours. Um, this character, though, like I said, we just finished Eater and Exarch. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and jump into a high tier map for you guys. Unfortunately, I don't have a good map to show because I'm out of maps right now. But Commander Kirak should actually have a map for us. So let's go ahead and peek. Here is a tier 16 map. Poison on hits probably really dangerous for us. Let's go ahead and check it out, though. Now, at this stage, you're pretty much the previous character. You're just a lot thicker, right? So you can see here, we've got like 83 max res now. Still not very amazing. Actually, this guy has 66 chaos res. That's what's nice about R uh, RF Chieftain, actually, is that you can easily get very high max chaos res by stacking the uh, fire and chaos res crafts that you unlock because fire res also gives you cold and lightning res. So a fire and lightning craft turns into fire, cold, um, fire, cold, lightning, and chaos. This character is also rocking a four link fire trap still so we don't have a five link or anything for that let's see if we can get a nice explode maybe we get lucky here so the boss is right here no explodes still no explodes actually getting bullied by this top pack up there that's kind of weird i'm 
not the fastest map clear or uh, boss killing like I was saying. When you're on very minimal gear, it's not going to be that amazing. Was that actually the map boss we just killed? Oh, okay. So he, he blinked into the blue pack and then the explode scooped him up. I have no fear though. We do get a lot more single target on this build. This is because we're still in the very early stages. We're on a four link fire trap. We don't have 21 gems. We're not running malevolence yet. Later in the build, we pivot into physical damage taken as. This allows us to drop armor scaling and that way we can fit in malevolence. So I'm gonna just going to go ahead and drop off of this character. And let me go ahead and show you kind of like your pinnacle end game, we'll call it. So over here, I've got my level 100 chieftain from Affliction League and he's pretty geared. However, let's go ahead and remove some of this gear. So I normally would be using a mage blood, all my flasks and my charms. Instead, I have removed all of my charms from the character. So we have no charms on. I have replaced my mage blood with a very expensive belt you can find here. And I'm going to just not have any flasks on since flasks are getting well, basically this flask specifically is getting nerfed in the patch for the way we would play it. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump into a map. I think I have uh let's do a redeemer. Sure. Sure. Let's do some monster life on redeemer. Now, this character you'll notice is going to have more enhanced explodes. And the reasoning on the enhanced explodes on this character is because we have something called ignite proliferation. That's your choice how you want to access it. I usually will either go with fan the flames on a cluster jewel or I will go with instead of having the fire multi here you can have Ignite Proliferation. Either one of these sources is just fine. There is another option where you can use Barracks Respite, which is a ring that does not necessarily give you proliferation, but it adds massive clear speed by making your Ignite kind of chain. Normally this character is a lot faster, but I'm not using Blood Rage because uh, I kind of took off a lot of my sustain and I don't really want to degen right now. <laughs> now I do want to pay or uh, bring a little bit of attention to this. They did introduce new tier 17 maps in Path of Exile, which are going to be in between, I believe, Pinnacle bosses and Uber bosses. I do want to state that Righteous Fire builds, specifically mine, are more focused on very tanky mappers. Also, very quickly at mapping when they are geared appropriately. I do think RF is going to be able to tackle some of the tier 17s, but I think it's a bit ambitious to say, this is my build for clearing T17 content and Ubers. I think Righteous Fire is best played as a tanky mapper with mid tier investment. And if you really like the build, you can go ahead and keep shoving in currency to make it clear Ubers and even most likely a lot of the tier 17 maps. But always understand that builds that are focused more on bossing are going to have a much better time with that. Your pain will be endless. So you can see here by this character, you're able to squeeze a decent amount of damage on Righteous Fire, but I will go ahead and throw down some numbers to help you guys out. I would say people in SSF are not going to be achieving more than a million damage between your RF and your Fire Trap, most on your Fire Trap. Um, by the time they're probably level like 90, 91, 92, somewhere around there. You can expect an SSF to peak your damage to about 2 to 2.5 million after acquiring your Elder Helm, your Six Link, and a few other things. It's going to be harder to go past 3 million in SSF. In Trade League, I'd say you're, you're going to have a much easier time hitting about 3 to 3.5, closer to 4 million damage, but going from 4 million damage to a much higher ceiling is when it gets very expensive. And this is because the very end game versions use the Adorn Jewel, which is probably going to be ridiculously expensive. That being said, you don't need this to clear any of your Void Stones. You can access your four Void Stones on a budget. Most builds are clearing Exarch and Searing Worlds uh, with just standard life res gear, RF included. When it comes to Maven and Uber Elder, I think most RF players are going to be able to clear Maven with minimal investment. We're talking about just your six link. You don't even really need the six link. Maven is more of a mechanics check. So if you can hit a million damage, you are already more than capable of doing Maven. Uber Elder is especially annoying on Chieftain though, because Uber Elder is a lot harder to tank than Maven. So standing still is much more difficult for us in our build. So that fight, I would say closer to two to three million damage is recommended. 
Still very doable, just more annoying. Anyway, that is pretty much about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope that I helped you guys out. If you liked it, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to utilize the resources here on the website to help you with anywhere when you get stuck. Some examples of how you can do this is going to the FAQ, simply clicking the Chieftain, Juggernaut, or Inquisitor node, reading through some of the questions, or keeping it on the All and Control F searching. For example, I don't like using Fire Trap. What pops up? For example, <clears throat> Fire Trap, Flame Wall, Flame Blast, Body Swap, Scorching Ray, which to use? How do I scale Righteous Fire or Fire Trap single target? How do I properly use Fire Trap? Why do you level so many Fire Trap gems? All of these I just went through myself personally and edited. So if you have a question and you think it should be on here, you can also go ahead and message me. Furthermore, for people who want to get into crafting their own gear, I do also have crafting. Not all of this is 100% up to date, but it's all valid. What I mean by that is some say some might say it's only for Juggernaut. Usually it's fine. Chieftain can utilize everything here. It's just typically for Chieftain, you don't really want to craft a shield. You want to go ahead and go for like an early Rise of the Phoenix because it's very beneficial. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have. Hope you guys have a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope to see you guys all in Necropolis. See you guys all tomorrow.